Ironside from uh, Athlone. That is going to be close. Ooh, that's the first. Yeah, that was a bit close. Wow, well, um, that was close. Um, I was on the way to back from um, an Irish Review and Association Committee meeting in Athlone, or just outside of Athlone. And this morning I charged here and I left with 89%. And I arrived in Athlone with 22 or 23% left. I now left Athlone with 99% and I arrived here with 1%. The difference being weather, first of all, um, it has, uh, it was pretty bad weather along the way, a lot of rain, um, but I think mostly, and I must actually look this up, but I have a feeling that it's more than likely to do with, say, geography. I have a feeling there's more downhill uh, going to Athlone than there is going back, um, but I'll, 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 I'll look that up. Uh, definitely weather, anyway. Anywho, I'm charging. I'm charging right next to an Ionic, um, which is a nice, nice looking car. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was the lowest I've ever gotten. The limited performance um, came on about, I'd say, probably about a kilometer away from the charge point. So I was able to do a kilometer on limited performance, and that was, you know, just doing about 50 kilometers per hour. It wasn't at motorway speeds or anything like that. I didn't do motorway speeds at all. Um, I was down in, um, in Nina, and I was sort of going, will I, won't I charge the fast charger there? But I decided, you know what, no, that's not. And there was one kilometer of a difference at the time between um, my estimate range and my range to the destination or a distance to the destination so the car was spot on obviously I did have to restrict my driving so it's not fun doing 95 to 100 on the motorway um, because that's as much as you're uh, willing to do due to battery safety and I'm glad I managed to do it anyway and breathe right bathroom and uh, on home probably about half an hour or so Right, 40 minutes later, we are finished at 100%. So that went from 1 to 100%, well, 99 in the space of 40 minutes. Uh, the Ionic you might still see behind me is actually not the same Ionic as when I started. I believe it's actually the second Ionic that pulled up. These Ionics are selling like crazy in comparison to other electric cars. And why not? They're a good car. Um, Hyundai are a popular car brand in Ireland and tech wise and price wise they're pretty pretty good and pretty convincing now uh, the only drawback of course would be the CCS chargers but that's me nitpicking um, the gentleman there in the second uh, Ionic he said that he doesn't really he doesn't really do a lot of long distance driving in it uh, and it suits him perfectly and he had a leaf beforehand so he actually went so that's an improvement. Anyway, back home we go. It's about, oh, what is it? 80 kilometers or so to home. I've got 130 in the tank, so that should be no bothers. That's actually a very convenient location for a charger. Um, it's, um, before that charger was there, the only charger you had here in Limerick City was the Pullman Gate, which is the other side of the city. Um, so you'd have to go through the city in order to, to, to actually get to it if you're coming from the double direction. Now you can just pop in here and it's, uh, it's pretty convenient. Uh, and of course it's a triple standard so I can dual charge. Oh. Um, now that's, I think that's about it. So like I said I had a, a uh, committee meeting there in Athlone, just outside of Athlone in the marina. And that was all brilliant very constructive as usual and um, yeah not much new plan I will be doing more than likely I'll just see if the weather is anyway nice tomorrow I might try and do some uh, photographic rally points tomorrow 
see how that gets, how that goes. Yeah, I might do that. I might have completely missed it, but uh, it looks like I've passed the 70,000 kilometers. That's awesome. Um, I passed it yesterday doing, um, going down to uh, my in-laws in Kerry, which was, I don't know, I think we've done about 260, 270 kilometers yesterday. Um, it's a good thing then that the car is going for a service soon because it hasn't actually had a service for the last, oh, 50,000 kilometers. Uh, hello everyone. Um, as you can tell, I am not driving a Renault Zoe. I am actually driving a Tesla Model S, 85 kilowatt hour. If my wife could hold the camera a little bit straight. Yes, there we go. Thank you, honey. <laughs> right. Um, I'm kindly. I've I've been. Uh, like, um, Everhart uh, Bruning, the gentleman who uh, featured before in my episodes with the tires, has kindly lent me his Tesla Model S. His absolutely beautifully gorgeous Tesla Model S, the Electric Eagle, for the day of my brother's wedding. Um, so I've been driving this car for the entire day. No, I didn't do any filming, obviously, because I was ferrying a bride and groom across the countryside and uh, taking pictures and going to City Hall and getting married. It was an absolutely beautifully wonderful day. Um, so they had a really, really nice wedding car. So I'll just uh, just quickly just talk about this car. Um, it has autopilot, which is probably the first thing people want to, 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 to know, but it's the autopilot. Um, 85 kilowatt hour battery. It has lovely leather interior. Uh, it seems to be white, um, although it's probably uh, more grey in the picture. Um, it is absolutely stunning. It's a normal S85, so it's a rear wheel drive. Um, it has all the other gadgets like the mirrors and the seated seats and the big giant touchscreen in the middle. And other than that, it's an absolutely brilliant, brilliant car. Um, so yeah, this is a very, very, very short little video clip um, about uh, me actually driving a Tesla Model S. I've been in a Tesla Model S several times, but this is my first time actually driving a Model S and it is absolutely brilliant. Good morning everyone. Um, it is the 20th of July. And I once again find myself driving to Dublin. Now, the previous few clips that you just saw uh, were filmed, well, the first one was filmed at the beginning of May. I forgot to include it in, not the last episode, but the one before that. Um, so I just thought I'd wanted you to see this because th this was the first time I had ever reached um, limited performance mode. Now I've never since actually <laughs> gone that low. Um, I got caught out badly nearly. Um, but it all worked out okay. The second bit was shot last week when I was in Holland. Uh, attending my brother's wedding and as I mentioned I managed to get uh, or uh, Everhard Brüning was kind enough to um, lend me his Model S now it was a, uh, it, it was a very brief video clip as uh, you may have noticed because obviously I was I was busy um, one of the things that I didn't film that particular day, and I do want to actually mention, just for the sake of, I don't know, openness or completion, the Tesla Model S, as many of you may know, is a large car. A very, very large car. Um, specifically when you come from a small, tiny little Zoe. Just as a comparison, the Tesla Model S is approximately 2 meters across. I don't do imperial me measurements, so if you need a conversion, go Google it. 
Um, whereas this car is about 1.5 meters long, so there is 50 centimeters of a difference. If you combine that fact, uh, if you combine that fact with the uh, obvious fact that I'm sitting on the other side of the car and driving on the other side of the road, and if you keep in mind that roads in Holland are generally narrow, um, or sorry, perfectly formed, I should say. Um, one of the main issues I then arose at was, oh darn, what if something happens to the car? And lo and behold, actually something did happen. My brother lives in a small village and the streets there are narrow. They are very narrow, especially when you're driving a two meter long car and you're not used to it. The Tesla Model S has lovely, I think they're 20 inch alloys. They're big, huge turbine ones anyway. Um, really nice looking wheels, but not a hell of a lot of protection when, you know, you hit a curve. That's exactly what happened. Now, I'd just like you to imagine that you have been kindly lent this car from a friend that is worth a nice amount of money. And, you know, you're delighted that you have it and you're trying to restrain yourself and you're trying to take care of it. And then you take a bend and ever so slightly too wide coming out of a parking lot. And you hear this wonderful crunching noise of metal against concrete. That nearly physically made me sick. Genuinely, genuinely was absolutely terrible. I felt horrible. Genuinely horrible. It happened uh, one of the last the, one of the last times I drove out of a parking lot in that car. Of course it did. I had driven out of that parking lot three times before that day. Of course it did. And then that horrible crunching sound of metal. The worst thing about it is you have to then reverse and hear that noise again. So, when it suitably, made, after it suitably sort of made me sick and I sort of recovered a bit, I sent Ava Hart a message going, oh darn, I curbed the wheels. And Mr. Cool, I can only describe him as, just sent me a message back going, okay, that'll be fine. So I handed it back that same evening and I was very much so, <laughs> Again, still feeling sick. And he was going, ah, sure, that's why you have insurance. So, I'd just like to say thank you very much, Everhart. Um, it was, um, yeah, um, thanks for being so cool about it. And I will see you again in August and I will bring a suitably cool present. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I just thought I had to put that in there just for completion's sake. Um, you've, you've seen the damage and, and I mean, like, they're such beautiful wheels and, yeah. Anyway, back to the present. Uh, like I said, I was on, I'm on my way to Dublin. Now, since I've had the BMS update, this is actually my first longer distance trip. I would say long distance trip because it's going to be probably close to 500 kilometers by the time I'm back home. So yes, long distance trip. And... And uh, I wanted to take the BMS update through its paces. So far, it's been performing brilliantly. The car is appears to have more range. Now, when I go to Dublin, your, or my regular viewers might know, I tend to do a quick stop in Cashel on the way up, and then a full charge in, well, Junction 3, Manor Stone. From my house to Junction 3 Manor Stone is about 125 kilometers. I should be able to do that in one charge. I have done that when I was driving Craig's car in Germany. So I should be able to do that. I'm a little nervous about it because there's a lot of hills in the area and yeah, I'm not entirely certain whether or not it's a good idea, but 
I have Cashel and Erlingford as chargers beforehand should something go wrong or should I chicken out, which is possible. Um, but like I said, I, I, should, I should be able to do this. At the moment, there is about five kilometers of a difference between the estimate range and the range to my destination. And I'm my experience of this particular BMS update is that that is probably pretty accurate. Now I'm hoping I can gain some range back, but we'll see. I'll keep you updated. So hello from the M8 motorway. So as I was saying, hello from the M8 motorway. It's amazing that you just want to do a little bit of a video clip and then someone rings you. Anyways, uh, I'm about 58 kilometers from my destination. I have 66 kilometers range showing. Now, I can probably say I'll make that. Um, I'm still a little bit anxious. Um, but it looks like I'm gonna be okay. Now, I haven't really been holding back with regards to the driving. I might start to do that. Um, I'm currently reading, let me just bring up the averages. I am currently reading a average consumption of 15.3, which is quite acceptable. An average speed of 79.9 kilometers an hour. Um, and I've driven 67.6 kilometers. Now, I've used about 11 kilowatt worth of energy. Now, if that's the case, and I've done 67 kilometers, I should be able to do the 125 with about 10 kilometers to spare, which is exactly the difference in range that I have at the moment. I have 10 kilometers of difference in range. So that's good. Let's see how, how, how long that lasts. 23 kilometers from my destination and I have a 32 kilometer range and even my TomTom -tom now thinks that I can make it which is encouraging it's hopelessly negative but you know probably for the better um, now of course the thing is I'll be arriving at Manor Stone with probably about 10 kilometers in hand maybe 12 if that charger isn't working, the nearest charger is about 15 kilometers away. So that'll be interesting. Um, just to highlight the single points of failure is a frequently used term when it comes to the charging infrastructure. Here in Ireland, there are mostly just there's mostly just one charger in any given spot. So if that charger doesn't work, or what happens in most cases, it's occupied then you have no choice but to wait because your next charger is probably going to be 10, 15 kilometers away unless you're in a bigger city. In a bigger city, you might have to drive a few hundred meters to the next charger, but say out in the countryside like where I am now, um, the nearest charger to Manor Stone would be probably Abbey Leaks, which is a 22 kilowatt charger. Which is fine when you're driving a Renault Zoe, not so much when you're driving pretty much any car. Um, the nearest fast charger would be Port Leash on one side, which is another probably 25 kilometers away. Or Erlingford, the other direction, which again is probably 20 kilometers away. Because um, I'm just about passing it, I think. You know, that's what the sign say, yeah, I've heard. So, yeah, it's not a best situation to be, and I, to be honest, I probably would stick to my normal regime of a 10 minute break in Cashel because time wise it doesn't make much of a difference. Like I've said before, whether you do lots of small stops or whether you do one big one, but for the sake of this particular test, I wanted to do one big one. So there we have it, 123 kilometers driven, and let's see how much energy did we use, or did I delete that by turning it off? No, 19.6. Now, 
the reason I want to show this is because before the battery update, my I think the energy in the battery was reading at around 19.6 or 19.8 thereabouts. So this was just at the limit. Now I have 16 kilometer remaining range. According to that in kilowatts, uh, probably about three kilowatt left, roughly. Um, so this basically shows exactly what the battery management software update did for me, I really should just say BMS. Um, it made this particular trip possible. As I said before, I probably wouldn't do it on a routine basis, just for even for comfort reasons. I've been driving for about an hour and a half. Um, I'm, you know, it's about as limited as I want to drive. Um, but yeah, it's possible. So let's plug in and see how, where we're at. And there we have it. Twelve percent remaining when I plugged in. Thirteen percent now. So yes, brilliant. Now my next stop uh, will be, I'm thinking Euston Station, or nearby anyway, because the meeting is in a hotel just across the way from the train station. Um, I would have taken the train if I wasn't so eager to try this BMS update. <laughs> because I actually get my travel expenses paid for. Um, so far, my travel expense has been probably about a euro, a little bit less, because I charged up last night at the train station whilst walking the dog, which I do on a regular basis. And so I only put the last probably about 5-6% in the battery, so it cost me substantially less actually. <laughs> what am I saying? Um, it probably cost me probably about 50 cent. So that's my current travel expense. Cheap motoring, isn't it? Um, anyway, I'm going to grab a coffee, because I need it. It's 10.30, so it's coffee time. Maybe a snack. Um, the car is saying 45 minutes to full, so I'm going to hang around here 45 minutes. So I plugged in around 10.30, so 45 minutes would be 11.15. So let's see what the car says at 11.15. So 83%, it's now 11 o'clock, so I have been here... A little bit less than half an hour. Um, let me just bring the cart along and I'll just show you what the charger is doing. I think we're down to about 22 kilowatts. Yeah, so we're about, yeah, down to about 20. I've been here 27 minutes. 18 kilowatt provided. It's pretty good though. Um, means basically, yeah, I don't have too many references on what it was like before the BMS update, but I do recall it was probably starting to drop, I think it was a little bit slower, it's still fast enough though, we're up to 85% there now, 20% or 20 minutes remaining it says, um, which I do believe to be accurate, so 20 minutes left to a full charge. So I've been here, yeah, probably about a half an hour by now. And we've gone from 12 to 85. Yeah, that's pretty okay. That's pretty okay. Um, that means probably that if I were to arrive here with about 20, 25%, I'd be out of there in about a half an hour. Yeah, that's pretty alright. So it's a quarter past nine, we're at 97%, it'll probably tick over to 98 soon. And let's see what the charger says. I bet it's down to about four kilowatt there about. Uh, seven, that's not bad. 42 minutes. So 11.36, still at 99%, it's been at 99% for about 15 minutes. Yeah, so that that's not really a practical thing to go always to 100%. So I'm going to disconnect and be on my way to Dublin. So, driving away from Manor Stone, I was parked right next to a wonderful BMW i3. Really, really, I, I do 
genuinely like the i3 if it wasn't for those silly, silly back doors. Um, anyway, it was a lovely chat there with the owner. Um, and well, I, I wanted to charge to see if it would actually charge to 100% in a reasonable time. The answer to that was no, it doesn't. Now, um, I think I it is what? It is 11.38 at the moment. I plugged in at 10.32. So that's about an hour and six minutes, or five minutes, you know. Um, and I have 138 kilometer range showing, and I have a what is it, 114 kilometers to my destination. So that should be no bothers. Uh, next stop is I'm going to try and get parking at the train station, uh, as I said before, and I'm going to see. If I can't park there, I'll probably find a, try and find a different one. There's about two or three within walking distance of the hotel where the meeting is. But parking-wise, I think there's like a two-hour parking limit or something along that line. I'll have to look into it because I know that you can get clamped um, at chargers in Dublin City if you don't pay your parking fee, which is fine. I don't mind paying parking. Not a bother. If there's a two-hour time limit, I might have an issue. Because my meeting is going to go on for longer than two hours. Anyway, we'll see when we get to Dublin. Um, I'm delighted that I actually got to Manor Stone in one go. Um, but like I said, I probably would not do this on a routine basis. And I obviously wouldn't do an hour long charge. Um, the 27 minutes it took to get to 80% would have been more than sufficient for my needs. Um, because I'd probably just add a quick splash and dash somewhere else and um, that isn't going to change. Uh, I still drive the same 22 kilowatt hour car. Ooh, Jesus, that was a loud uh, stone that just hit my windscreen. Uh, I'm not seeing a crack yet. That's a good sign. Oh, anyway. Uh, these things happen, I guess. Um, so yeah, that distracted me. Okay, so I will be driving up to Dublin in one go but normally I wouldn't. I'd, I'd try and space my um, stops out a bit more. So uh, we'll see you guys in Dublin. So here we are in the big smoke of Dublin. Not a problem range wise. Still have 32 kilometers showing. I'm about 1.7 kilometers away from my destination. So that was no problem. Now let's see if I can actually get a parking spot at a charger. Sadly, that's a no. Time to find another charger. Um, not particularly concerned about parking at a charger, but it would just be convenient to come back to a fully charged car um, after uh, the meeting. Um, there are two more chargers I'd like to try. I should probably check the... Um, actual um, the cars app to see if there's availability maybe but I'm literally less than 500 meters away by the time I've checked it besides I'm in the middle of traffic by the time I've checked it I will have already been there so I'm just gonna drive up and we'll see what happens so we are charging seeing one hour remaining I am curious to see whether that's true or not um, I've just paid for my parking and I'm just going to go down to my meeting, which is about 200 meters down the road. Very convenient. That's good. Um, yeah, that, that was uh, trouble-free. Very much so. Now, meeting over. It is... What time is it? It is 20 to 5. And I'm just making a very awkward U-turn because this is a effective one-way street because it goes straight into the some Irish museum and there's no right turn or left turn at the end of the street so I have no choice but to go back anyway mm -hmm. I have to put my sunnies on uh, it has since rained thankfully I missed it all so where are we state of charge wise? Well, I am currently showing 155 kilometers of range where uh, the car actually finished charging probably, I think it was five to three. Um, 
and it's been happily standing there for the last little over three hours. And um, my destination is 115 kilometers away. I'm trying to gonna trying to go back to Manorstone. I'm not entirely sure I'll do a full charge there. I might see if I do the exact same thing. Um. Anyway, yeah, this has been brilliant. So I've been able, I've been able to go down to Dublin in one charge. It's amazing. Um, now, from a driving perspective, on the way back, there's a good bit of uphill towards Nace. The other problem I have is that it's quarter to five and I'm a little hungry. So I am going to have to try and find a stop to eat. The question is where? Hmm what to do what to do anyway I think I'm, I'm due depending on traffic and it is five o'clock as previously mentioned so it might be a bit of traffic I'm due to reach Manor Stone around six that's perfect dinner time hmm I think I'm gonna try and drive on to Manor Stone and uh, because my options before that are let's see now we have Nace with a dodgy charger and Pretty much no food options, although there is a drive through McDonald's I could use, or I could walk to the McDonald's. There is Junction 14, but Junction 14 only has a 22 kilowatt AC charger, it doesn't actually have a fast charger. Then we have Port Leash. Port Leash has a food court, <laughs> which is pretty abysmal, in my personal opinion. And then we have Manor Stone, where I'm thinking of going which has a fully fledged super max which is the irish equivalent of sort of a mcdonald's clone as well as pizza which is always a favorite of mine yeah i think i'm gonna just see if i can just drive straight down to manor stone and get the traffic behind me yeah so we'll see you guys along the way if i ever get there because the traffic is pretty darn bad so we've left the big smoke Traffic is very busy. Busy but moving, I'm delighted to say. Um, currently have suffered a 12 minute delay according to my dear sat nav. Um, but I'm still on schedule to make it to Manorstone comfortably. I have a 32 kilometer difference between my estimate range and my actual distance to my destination, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, Weather-wise, it looks like we've got a bit of a southwesterly, which is good in a way because it's well, um, it's more like a southerly wind. It's sort of on my on the side of the car, so I'm not actually really being hindered by it. Plenty of trucks on the road for me to slipstream behind them. Anyway. <laughs> so uh, yeah, um, what a different a battery management system update makes. The other thing I also would like to point out is that the only reason I'm, I'm, I'm having a great trip back is that I was able to charge at a destination charger. Um, and I was able to charge at a destination charger in the extent that I actually had a full car when I came back. Um, now this is primarily due to the awesome charger of this car. And the car was finished charging in about 1 hour and 15 minutes, whereas poor fella with a Nissan Leaf would probably be uh, still looking at only gaining in 1 hour and 15 minutes, they'd probably only gain, oh I don't know, 30%. So that, well depending on the size of your battery, obviously. Um, I had loaded 21.13 kilowatt hours um, during my charging session. Um, so that, that's pretty, pretty darn good. Now, this brings me on to the point of destination chargers. I'm always of the opinion that there's not enough of them. Here in Ireland, whilst we have a reasonably good fast charge infrastructure, we hopelessly lack behind in destination chargers. Other countries are putting them up in their thousands. Um, you know, and here in Ireland we've got a total of probably about a thousand um, 
AC chargers, which we described as destination chargers, where we should probably have 10,000. Easily have 10,000. Maybe not all 22 kilowatt chargers, but, you know, 11 or 7 should be very much so, very much so doable. When I'm in Holland again, in a few weeks, I'm I, I'm always amazed at the amount of chargers. It's it's not just that there's chargers there; there is a lot of chargers there, and every year it appears to just increase. It's like they're literally just you know popping out of the ground, um, which is brilliant. I mean, every single shopping center, every single hotel, every single public building should have at least two or three. Uh, or in the cases of Holland, you know, 10. Whereas over here, I had, um, even though it's Houston Station, it's the, the, the main train station in Dublin, it had a grand total of two sockets available. Two. Two. <laughs> Just amazing. Um, yeah, so, uh, anyway. Now it okay. Technically, there's another two sockets across the street from it, so that's four. Um, no, the one that I was parked at, I can't see that as part of the train station. Just can't. That's just a street charger in 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 Dublin. The only reason it wasn't actually um, blocked was because one of the the actual spots was painted. Anyway, I have a fully charged car. And that's how it should be. You should be able to park anywhere in a large city and be able to plug your car in. Um, Ubitricity is a company from Germany that is implementing or putting in chargers in streetlights. I was I was in contact with them, thinking it'd be a great thing to get to Ireland. Until I realised that most of our streetlights are actually installed. I know this This is at least the case in the town where I live and I've seen it mostly around Ireland is that they tend to put the street lights on the other side of the pavement so as far away from the main road as possible whereas in most European countries it's it's sort of they're put between the road and the pavement so the cable wouldn't be a trip hazard whereas here in Ireland the cable would be a trip hazard um, it's a bit of a shame, really, when you, when I come to that came to that realization. Uh, oh, why are we stopping people? It's standing traffic. I don't mind busy but moving. I can't stand standing still in traffic, especially with all these stinkers around me. Now I'm about eight kilometers away from Manor Stone, um, and I have twenty-eight kilometers range showing so that's no bother um yeah uh, brilliant so you know my little Dublin with one stop if you wish you know of course you may not want to like I said I still think I probably end up doing smaller shorter stops rather than one long one I was at the feeling I'm rather than sort of waiting. Uh, I, pr I prefer to sort of wait for about 20-25 minutes rather than say 140. Yeah. And considering that the car slows down after 80% more so than previously, that might not be a bad strategy. So that's, you know, 80% is the new 99%, if you will. Um, in the meantime, my the little traffic jam has cost me about 35 minutes worth of a delay versus what the sat nav said my arrival time would be when I left versus the time that it is now. Um, but hey, that's the joys of motoring as they say. So far it's been very cheap motoring because all it cost me so far is the parking fee and one bottle of water and coffee. So that's pretty good going. And time, of course. Uh, here we are, Manor Stone. Just a shy of 350 kilometers. And I'm not even in alarm range. Here we are, 16%.
So 33 minutes later we're at 93%. I've just finished dinner. Busy inside there and they're not the fastest with regards to service, but half an hour seems to be good enough to get about 90%, um, which is pretty darn good, um, to be honest. Uh, now that I know that 90% is actually 90%. Um, I'm gonna disconnect. Um, I'll be grabbing a coffee and casual. And um, yeah, then it's home time. Yeah, we can dream. Now I'm in Cashel because of coffee and yeah, the heavens have opened. Now I didn't hold back with regards to my consumption and as a result I'm actually pretty low. Well. There you go. So I actually need to stop anyway. Now that's the one other drawback of EV ownership in Ireland I'd like to talk about. For those of you who have seen me charge at Fastnet stations, they're under cover. Here, not so much. Yeah. Right, plug in coffee. Yeah, and then home. Now, 21 minutes, and we're off. And yes, that is an A hole um, BMW parked in the other electric car spot. <laughs> But he doesn't seem to care. Now, ten past nine, nearly exactly twelve hours on the road. Well, in this day, and we are back home. Well, nearly back home. In my street, I should say. Um, I have 43 kilometers left showing on my range. That's no bothers. A total distance travelled of 474. Point two kilometers. Now, there we are. I'll just show you guys. There we are. Pretty decent distance and pretty decent speed. Pretty decent trip. Did a little bit of a sticker refresh in the back of the car. Particularly like this one. I can put a link uh, in the description somewhere if I can find it again, because this was given to me.